How do I look? Piratey. Great. Hey guys, welcome to part four of Life is Strange 2, episode four. And last time we finally reunited with the mother of Sean and Daniel Diaz, who have been away for years. So uh, maybe this time in this episode, we're going to get some answers. So we've had a shower, but we're still as red as Alan Kerbichley's face. Man, didn't clean the pain away, but that felt good. And so now we get to explore Karen's hotel room. Karen seems to be on the move quite often. Yeah, she's got a kind of like Sarah Connor kind of vibe about her. Like kind of ugly and has weird hair. Damn, you look bad. Gotta change that dressing soon. Oh, I don't think there's anything else to do in here, so we'd better go out. And I'm sure... Maybe not have a heart-to-heart, -heart, but maybe get some answers on where she's been. Wonder how long Karen has been here. Did she see one of Daniel's... Kinda pretty. Wonder if she made it. All right, let's have a look at Karen's stuff, then. I know I shouldn't peek, but... Condoms? <sighs> Whatever. Glad to know she learned the lesson. Hemorrhoid cream. Dynabills. Karen did her own road trip to get here. Mmm, apple pie. Boulder City, that sounds cool. Sounds like somewhere in, like, uh... Crush Bandicoot or something. Huevos Rancheros Reds style. Reds chicory coffee. Chicory coffee. Turning forward to look back, making the same choice twice, twice my solitude days and dreamy nights just to find myself looking forward to turn back. K. Okay. So she does a bit of poetry on the side. Damn. Karen does like to capture the world around her. Tracing closer every mile, my heart goes racing, sore. I remember, know the feeling, there's no fighting back, that beating, tearing apart my core. Early morning blues, coffee, red-eyed truckers and sad families. Bad eggs, not the waitress's fault. She is a quick, hurried one, probably ending a long night shift. Tag says Clementine, 22-ish, redhead, dyed brunette. Eyebrows and skin tone don't lie. Irish descent? Owner's daughter, maybe. Mahoney's. Vague, polite smile. Busy mind. Mildly clumsy. Looks distracted. Anxious. Young cooked called her Clemmy. Brother. Boyfriend. Boyfriend. Apologises when the orders are late and she's the one getting roasted. Do mum and dad know you're dating on the job, Clemmy? Mixing up work and love seldom makes a good match. That a brand new baby bump under the stained apron? It's 2017 and young folks are still busy making babies. I guess nothing ever really changes. Well, how do you? What else we got? We have a church flyer. So Karen did check it out. Wonder if she saw Daniel in action. Yes, yeah, so that's the one that we saw on that pinboard. I guess that's the word for it. Pinboard? Well, then, the corkboard things, you know what I mean? <sighs> this country is just... Way too big. Too fair, it is massive, like, especially compared to us. Let's check a drawer. A casino token. That's pretty cool, actually. <sighs> Sorry. I still have no game. 
And the house always wins. I guess this is our collectible for this bit. I'm surprised he didn't steal her keychain that she made. I was kind of expecting him to do that. I really should finish reading this someday. Oh, I'm not even going to look through it? Okay. Save the tablet for later. Okay, look at the mobile phone, sure. Karen was always into low tech. I even think it's the one she had back then. It's very thin. We've come a long, long way, buddy. I feel like old phones would be like much more chunky. Like, you know that Nokia? It was like the blue with like the kind of silver trim. That was like fucking thicker than that. Okay, Karen's note. Is that for us? Be right back. <sighs> we'll find out. Popped out for supplies. I'll grab some food in case you want to eat. New socks and shorts in the bathroom, all yours if they fit. Might be a good time to contact Jacob. His number is on the letter he sent. Be right back, Karen. Oh, there's another thing that I missed. Be right back. <sighs> we'll find out. Wasn't there? Did I make that up? Okay, apparently I saw a thing and there wasn't there. Uh, that's a backpack. I don't think there's going to be anything really of much interest in there. This thing is killing my back. I got bruises on my bruises. It's like a Dr. Zeus. I've got bruises on my bruises. So we have a lighter, a wallet, Cassidy's letter, Chris's letter, grandparents' letter. Oh yeah, Brody's letter. If you didn't see, he was like in the first one. And we have Leon Kennedy's jacket from Resident Evil 4. That's cool. And we've still got our drawer a lot. And it's broken, so that's sad. Sad times. All right, let's have a look at this tablet then. Huh. This isn't our tablet. Struggles with T, many open apps, but should be okay for basic browsing slash geocat. Okay. Password is 112708. Yay, technology. She came prepared. Welcome to your new life at the Universal Uprising Church in Haven Point. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew 28, 19, 20. Mission, accept the Lord, spread the word of Jesus, keep faith with the community to seek and save the lost. Message, as a pastor of our holy church, I have devoted my life and love to the teachings of the gospel and our Lord. I was blessed since childhood to be giving this calling, and it is my privilege to spread the word and preside over this long, righteous community of Haven Point. I look forward to meeting each and every one of you who seeks out our humble refuge. Together we will begin the journey to a new life, guided by the Spirit and the Lord Saviour. Bless you all. Haven Point, Nevada is a living oasis where individuals and families can live out their faith in a community dedicated to the teachings of Christ. All who share our faith are welcome to join us and build a bridge to the Lord and his eternal estate. I quite like that phrasing, eternal estate. Uh, okay, so just more kind of babbling. The Reverend Mother doesn't look too humble. Slice of Haven Point, one of the great mysteries of Nevada is how it balances the Holy Spirit with the Holy Dollar. Few tourists travel from around the world to seek religion here, but in the tight-knit Christian community of Haven Point, Nevada, a charismatic pastor has inspired a devout following. Was it Tagliatelli? As she told me in an interview at her peaceful church office, Reverend Elizabeth Fisher has spent her whole life as a humble disciple of the Lord, feeling the call to share his love and glory in his dark age. I had a powerful experience as a child, and that put me on the righteous path. She smiles gently and touches my hand. But this is not about me or my story, as anybody in our wonderful church can tell you. And tell me they did. The members of the Universal Uprising Church. So what's short? What what's that short for? Like the Uck? Speak with husband. Uh, speak with hushed awe of their pastor. Now she inspires them. Reverend Fisher just wants to share her blessings with us, says Corey Johnson, 34, a recent addition to the congregation. I was pretty cynical before I went to one of her revivals. You could feel the electricity when she spoke. People were crying, including me. <laughs> Wonderful. Looks like a roach motel. So shitty but motel. Nobody will but find me it's there. out of the way. Nice pool, but dusty as fuck. So, what do we do now? Do we just wait? Maybe we can... I'm not going out. 
Better wait for Karen in here. Let me check for her out of the curtain. This place is quite remote. Yeah, quite remote. It is quite remote, isn't it? Good. At least nobody will be looking for me here. Draw. Do you know what? I probably shouldn't have bothered since we've already done like two. I got a few moments to myself, so let's practice. So, you know what? I'll fast forward this bit because I probably shouldn't have done it, but never mind. <sighs> Alright, back to reality, dude. Okay, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed that little, like, fast-forward version of us drawing as I try and work out what the hell we're meant to do to speed her arriving along. Oh, yeah, call that guy. Karen said she left me Jacob's number somewhere. Jeez. It only took Supermom eight years to give a shit. Dear Mrs. Diaz, my name is Jacob and I worked with your sons, Sean and Daniel, on a farm in California. There were some problems and Sean went missing. I'm with Daniel now in Haven Point, Nevada. Give me this PO box address so if you get this, I think Daniel might be in danger. He needs help to get out of here. I can tell you more if you contact me at this number. Please hurry. Thank you, Jacob. 775-555-0118. Come on, don't get stuck on the bloody thing. Jacob, it's me, Sean. Sean? No way. No way. I've been waiting to hear from you for months. You have? So you, you found my note in your sketchbook? <sighs> yeah. Where are you? You have to come here, Sean. I know. I'm not far. In a motel. Good. Listen, I, I can't talk right now. I gotta go. Wait! Daniel, how's he doing? Meet me tomorrow afternoon on Brandy Highway. There's a, a, a junction just above Haven Point. There's a, a, a wild mice ranch billboard there. I'll be there at four. Jacob, wait! I can't talk, Sean. Be there tomorrow. Please. That wild mice ranch billboard was the same one that we could see at the uh, the menu screen at the start. So that's pretty cool kind of tie-in thing. Damn. He couldn't really talk. <sighs> All this is so messed up. Let's just rest while I wait for her. If she comes back. I thought he was going to be cleaning out his monkey eye. Hey, sorry it took so long. The fucking store was packed. How are you feeling? Nothing broken? Alter boys don't fight fair? Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah, laugh it up. Double cheese, no onion. Right? That'll do. <laughs> he was trying to make a point, but he's like, fuck it, I'm hungry. Got you some gauze and uh, antibacteria stuff for your eye. Mm. Hey, don't wolf that down. Or at least take a breath. <sighs> like you care. Sean. I do. <sighs> Come on, Karen. Don't act all hurt. It's too late. Where were you when I broke my leg when I was 13? Not with me. When Daniel got a bad flu a couple years ago, he didn't sleep next to him every night. Where were you? Where were you? Fair enough. So let's talk, because we do have to get your brother out of a cult. I'm listening. How did you two survive alone on the road for that long? 
We almost didn't. We just... kept moving. And nobody helped you along the way? You know I don't have to answer your questions, right? You're right. So tell me what you want from me, Sean. Nothing, Karen. I mean, what do you want from me? A fucking hug? Hey, I just want you to know what I did. And why. If you care. So, ask me anything. <sighs> All right. Why did you bail on us? I wasn't meant to be a wife or a mother. I thought I was supposed to. I tried to pretend for many years, but I wasn't happy, and the urge to leave just became unbearable. I had no other choice. Are you serious? You chose this life. You fell in love. You made your own choices, right? Making your own choices doesn't mean you can never fool yourself, Sean. After I had Daniel, you were about eight, and Esteban's garage was getting busy. There was so much going on around me, yet somehow I just felt that my own life was just slipping away. I felt like an empty shell. Sean, it was the hardest decision I ever made. I knew I might never see you all again, but I took that responsibility. She is, like, brutally honest. Did Dad know about all of this? I was honest with your father. We did family therapy, but it wasn't about him. It was me. He was heartbroken for months after you left. Years. I was, too. I was in love with your father. He was the best person I ever met. But just not enough for you. Something was missing from the equation, yeah. I was. So what exactly are you doing in Nevada? You live around here? No. I'm uh, way out in Arizona. Sean, I told you. Your friend uh, Jacob wrote my P.O. box and said Daniel was in trouble. That's it. Arizona? Holy shit. It's just lizards and rocks. Yes, I found something there. New York didn't really do me good, so... Yeah, okay. Think I've heard enough. I didn't have a choice, Sean. We only have one life. And I didn't want mine to be spent in regrets. For years, I fooled myself. Thinking I'd find satisfaction into what society expected me to be, and that was my mistake. I hope someday you can understand that. But I never stopped caring about you. For what it's worth, I am sorry for hurting you and Daniel and Esteban. Oh, please. It's too fucking late for that shit. No matter what, you left your own kids and my dad, so don't even- I know it's too late. I just, I want you to know how I feel. Yeah. I still don't care. Jeez. Sean, whatever you want to say to me, this is the time. Let's just get it all out in the open, see what happens. So, did you ever actually miss us? Or Dad? Of course, Sean. I do miss your father. 
He had such a big heart. He could brighten up a rainy day. That was like his superpower. But above all, I missed watching you grow up. See how you saw the world. I missed sharing these moments with you, Sean. We used to do so much stuff. Like when you taught me to ride because Dad sucked. Or when we went camping near Vancouver. Just me and you. You always loved night skies. I did stargaze a lot when I was in California. Trust me, the further south you go, the better it gets. So... What did you do when you left? Where did you go? I pursued some dreams and failed. Learned the lessons. I guess all this time I tried to find out what really matters to Which me. Which doesn't involve a husband and two kids. It does to a lot of people. And I totally respect that. Just not to me. I wasn't good at making plans. Which is what most of modern life is about, right? School, job, marriage. Ask my mom and dad. They wanted me to follow their rules. Their faith. Oh, I tried. But I wanted to find my own way. With no security blanket. Family. Religion. Social norms. It's just all about security, after all. But it all just looked like a sweet golden jail to me. I tried to escape that. Yeah. Hope it was worth it. It was. For now, I found my place in the world. With like-minded people. I'm at peace with my fuck-ups and my decisions. How do you make peace with bailing on your parents, your husband, and your kids? I know, that's hard to understand. But I think people should know who they are. And not fake it for anybody. I mean, I get you wanted to leave and stuff, okay? But why would you ghost us like that? Not even a fucking birthday card. I just... I thought if I vanished, you would all move on. But I wanted to contact you guys so many times. I almost did. But you wanted a clean break from us. I didn't want to be a part-time, pissed-off mother. Not fair to any of you. I left when Daniel was still very young, so he wouldn't remember me. Cool plan, Mom. You heard Daniel way worse. He thought you took off because of him. I know. I hope I can make it up to you, Daniel. Someday. I can start by getting his ass out of that church. Cult. Whatever. <sighs> Whatever. You sound so... careless. It's like you can't even realize how much pain you've caused. I do care. It's why I'm here. To help you and your brother. If I didn't step up to help him now, I couldn't live with myself. Esteban hated when I smoked. He didn't want me to die an early death. Fuck. Life can be so cynical sometimes. I remember he would smoke sometimes. Long ago. We didn't fight much. But when we did, I would go out on the porch and light up so I could calm down. Esteban would come over and ask for a drag. 
Now we just look up at the sky and watch the stars. Or the planes. I do miss that. I used to do the same thing with my best friend Lila. Smoking on the porch. Just letting time go. That's when you know someone is good to you. When you can just sit together. <laughs> Shut the hell up and watch the universe do its own thing. I don't know if it's just me, but I really don't see her and that Esteban guy, like, being a couple. It's just kind of weird. Like, they just seem, like, kind of too different to me. Like, Esteban doesn't seem like the kind of guy that would go for, like, a chick like her, because she seems too kind of, like, loner, hippie kind of thing going on. We should go back inside. I gotta change this dressing. Okay. Let's go. Sean, I know I can't change the past. Or what I did. But this is about helping your brother. You gotta trust me this one time. I know. He should have way more blisters on his feet. It's still hard. Well, then I'm just being like kind of monkey. But yes, we have to be a team to rescue Daniel. We can do it. Okay. How? We can be a team like the Spirit Squad. We need to get in touch with this Jacob. He obviously knows a lot more than us about the church. Well... Well, lucky we're meeting him tomorrow. I called him when you were out. We can meet with him tomorrow. Okay, good. I also got these, just in case. They are very small walkie-talkies. Okay. Better take care of the eye. So, do you need any help with that? Yes. Thanks. So, you feel like telling me the story here? When we have time. Gotcha. I mean, they have all day and all night, so I'm sure they'll find time to squeeze it in. We have to watch the whole thing. It would have been like way more effective as like a kind of bonding thing if she would like just had her starting to help him and then they just kind of like pull the camera back and like fade out and it's like, okay, I get the drift. I don't need to watch the whole thing. Here, try this on. <laughs> An eye patch, why thank you, mother. How do I look? Piratey. Great. Thank you, Karen. Big day tomorrow, so we should get some rest. Yeah. I'm ready to get Daniel. Booyah! That was a hella long heart-to-heart -heart conversation thing. I didn't think it was going to be that long. But yeah, so, getting Daniel, this should be interesting. So you know what, this is unorthodox, but I'm going to call that an episode here and have this, like, heart-to-heart -heart thing is just like its own separate thing, just so that everything's not, like, really fucking long. So thanks for watching, stay awesome. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot, guys.